Another important concept to understand when looking at the architecture of Cassandra is the idea of the snitch. So the snitch is responsible for understanding the topology of our cluster. And the topology basically means the snitch keeps track of in which data center and on which rack every node is. So the snitch is responsible for knowing that this node here is in data center one, this node here is in data center one as well, this node here might be in data center two, this one data center three, and this one data center two, and the same for racks within the data centers. And the snitch's main job is to be able to decide kind of which will be the most responsive nodes for our request. If our request is received in data center one, then it's gonna be quicker to write and read data from data center one than from another data center. So there are several different types of snitches in Cassandra. The simple snitch is the default snitch and assumes that all nodes are in the same data center and same rack. So the simple snitch is fine for testing, but in a production environment, it's probably not a good idea to use it because Cassandra won't make any determinations on which nodes are in which data centers and thus it won't fully understand the actual real life topology of the cluster where nodes in different data centers or nodes in further away data centers might take a longer time to respond. We also have the property file snitch. And this is better than the simple snitch for a production environment because in a file in our Cassandra settings, we're able to give each node where every other node is in our cluster. So the property file snitch might have an IP address and then the data center and rack for one node, our first node, and then for the second node, it might also have the IP, what data center, what rack it's in, and the third node, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, this file in large clusters could get very big as we might have, as we saw in the case of Apple, 25,000 nodes running in our cluster, which becomes very unmaintainable, especially if we have to keep this up to date for every node in our cluster. And this can be a huge manual effort. So the property file snitch has kind of gone out of fashion due to this manual effort and has been replaced by something called the gossiping property file snitch. So the gossiping property file snitch is very similar to the property file snitch, except that for every node in the cluster, we only have to specify in the Cassandra rack DC property setting file, which we'll look at in a minute, the data center and rack for the current node. So we'll only have say, for the node we're currently on, i.e. the node where this file lives, the data center say is equal to one and the rack equal to three. And we'll have that for every node in our cluster. And we don't have to update this file with the data center and rack for every node in our cluster, just the current node. So Cassandra then spreads this data throughout the cluster using something called the gossip protocol, which we'll talk about in a later video. And this means that every node in the cluster is aware of what data center and rack every other node is currently in. And this means we can easily add other nodes to our cluster without having to update the property file snitch of every other node. We can simply just add a new node, say what data center it's in, say what rack it's on, and then this will be propagated throughout our cluster. So every node is aware of the new node and every node is aware of what data center and rack that new node lives in, AKA every node is aware of the new topology of the cluster. So this is what we'd recommend for a production deployment of Cassandra. It's a lot more automated and it's a lot more efficient than the simple snitch. There's also a number of cloud-based snitches which are specific for the cloud providers. So there's a snitch specific for Amazon Web Services, one for Google Cloud, one for cloud stack and probably a good few other ones as well. So the final thing we need to really understand about snitches is the concept of the dynamic snitch. So this snitch is used in combination with the other snitches and it's turned on by default. So every snitch uses the dynamic snitch. The purpose of the dynamic snitch is to monitor the performance of all the nodes in our cluster using the gossip protocol, which we'll talk about in a later video again. And this uses the information it receives from the performance of all nodes in the cluster to determine what replicas to query during a particular request. So say for instance, this node here 
which is called the coordinator node for this request, has received a request to read data. And we know using the partitioner and the replication strategy that the data might lie on these three nodes. And the snitch tells us where those three nodes are. So we might know that this one is in data center one, this one's in data center two, this one's in data center three. So the dynamic snitch has told all the nodes in our cluster about the performance of each of these nodes. And because this node here and this node here are in the same data center, it's very likely that the snitch has seen better performance between these two nodes. So Cassandra and the coordinator node will know to route our read to this node here because it will likely respond the quickest. It will also know that, say for instance, this node here will be the second quickest respond. And in order to satisfy our consistency level, which again, we're assuming is quorum, we need to successfully read the data from two nodes. So it will also read a request here and expect a response. So Cassandra will read the full data from the node it thinks will respond the quickest. In this case, what we've called node two here. So it will read the full data, which may be quite large from here. From the other nodes it queries, it will only read the timestamp and what we call the checksum to ensure that the data we read from the full node and from the other nodes to satisfy our consistency level is the same information. This way, Cassandra can achieve very high performance as it's only querying the quickest responding node or what it thinks is the quickest responding node for the full piece of data. All other nodes it queries, say we'll query this one as well, we'll call this one node four, all other nodes, its queries will only respond with a small piece of data called the checksum to ensure that the data that the quickly to respond node, i.e. the full data, is the same as the data that is stored on the other two nodes in order to satisfy our consistency level. So if we jump back on our virtual machine that's running Cassandra, we can navigate to the location where our Cassandra configuration files are. And in this case, it's in etc slash Cassandra list the files here and we can see that we have cassandra.yaml which will contain what our current snitch is so in order to view that we can type nano and then cassandra.yaml that will open up the file and then we want to navigate down to near the bottom i believe where the snitch is configured so here it is here we see a description on all the snitches available. So we've got the gossiping property file snitch, what we talked about, the property file snitch, uh, a number of these cloud snitches that are also available. I believe these two are for Amazon Web Services. And then if we go down again, we can see that our current snitch, as is expected, because the symbol snitch is the default. If we quit out of this and we go back and we look at our properties in Cassandra Rack DC properties, We'll be able to see what the current data center and current rack are for this snitch so we can see the description here these properties are used with the gossiping property file switch and will indicate the rack and dc for this node so this is where we decide the data center and the rack and then the gossiping property file snitch uses these values and propagates these values throughout the cluster so our whole cluster can understand the topology of the cluster so thanks for watching this video, guys, on snitches. In the next video, we'll look at the gossiping protocol used in Cassandra and how these values of the data center and rack get propagated throughout the cluster. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up or leave a comment in the comment section if you've got anything to say.